Hello internet, welcome to my channel. You probably have never been here before. So I'm Udo ADHD. I talk about whatever I want. So if you vibe with that, subscribe. We are a small channel. So if you want to make yourself known, leave a comment and we definitely will say howdy. I have to respond about Logan Paul and this abysmal response that he made to CoffeeZilla. If you are looking for a different point of view, her keep watching so in case you don't know what's going on because you might be like me I'm the kind of person that I'm just here for the tea even if I don't know what the tea is look it's about crypto scams which is common when it comes to youtubers and crypto scamming it's like butter and bread it's like milk and chocolate it's like <laughs> they can't be separated CoffeeZilla, he's this YouTuber. Um, he made a three-part series about Logan Paul exposing Logan Paul's scam called CryptoZoo. Um, I love CoffeeZilla. Congratulations, not that he'll ever watch my video, but congratulations, CoffeeZilla, on over 2 million subscribers. I have been following CoffeeZilla Back when he only had 100,000 subscribers and he was posting on a channel called Coffee Break. What made me start following this man is because he made exposés on that channel, Coffee Break, too. But he made a big boo-boo. I forget the YouTuber that he was going after, but he completely mischaracterized this YouTuber and did not get his facts straight at all. He apologized. And not one of those things where you just take down the video and then apologize on Twitter. He apologized on YouTube. I felt like you're a keeper. Subscribing to any project that you endeavor on. And he's been growing ever since because he calls out scammers, fake gurus, people who are just acting shysty in ways that will steal your money. He calls them out, posts receipts, and... He's a pretty, he's been upping his video, like his quality, his video quality and his editing and his production. Fantastic. He deserves all these new subscribers and Logan Paul can't handle it. Now, let me tell you something. First of all, this is not Logan Paul's first scam. Okay. That's why I had this dink doink up here. Keep because, your filthy um, hands off my dink, you perverts. No. No. I hope YouTube allows that word. There's this new thing on YouTube where you can't say like a shady word within the first seven minutes of your video. I guess we'll find out today. We'll find out if that P word is allowed. But anyway, this is Dink Doink. No! Um, you ready, Dink Doink? Let's do this. Okay, I don't know. It's just stupid. It's like it's South Park. It, it, it was trying to do the meme coin thing literally people investing in memes and jokes anyway this was a pump and dump so if you don't know what a pump and dump is you need to understand to understand exactly how this new scam worked a pump and dump is when you create a coin or you get in early and you conspire to increase the price of this coin and then sell everything so you conspire to have a lot of this coin launch it, um, hype it up on Twitter, whatever, hype it up so that a lot of people will buy in, increase the price, and then you all sell exactly at the same time so you can cash in at the higher price. But that, because you have so many of the coin, it makes the coin value go to like zero. And it will never go back up again because it literally has no value like all the influencers or whoever was hyping it up, they sold out. They're not going to promote it anymore. It has no value. The coin will never increase in value again. So you've essentially conspired to rob people who fully trusted you. Okay, so he did that with Dink Doink and he was planning to do it again with a project he called Crypto Zoo. So... Now that you're caught up on what's happening, this is Logan's response. 
Coffeezilla. I watched her three-part series called Investigating Logan Paul's Biggest Scam. And like many on this platform, you have successfully used my name for views and money. While your work, you... So I have to... Already we pause it. I have to note that I really feel like Logan... I think Logan's feelings were hurt. Um, because Logan is also a fan of Coffeezilla. If you are into cryptocurrency, you are a fan of Coffeezilla. If you are into the crypto community in any way, you are subscribed to Coffeezilla and you like him and you respect him. So I'm sure his feelings were hurt that somebody that he liked and admires, I think he still admires this guy. I think he actually kind of respects him and admires him more because he caught him. But um, his feelings were hurt. But I think he also he uses this kind of stuff. He uses beef as content, right? It's similar to when Logan and his brother Jake were beefing with each other. Those were real feelings. They were actually really beefing, but they were also using the beef to drive content and viewership. So I think Logan is doing the same exact thing with this Coffeezilla thing. I think he's trying to milk this for content and milk this for views and Hey, everybody stay tuned to see what happens next. So I don't see the point in doing the whole, you're just using my name for a clout like everybody else. You're just a clout chaser. There's no point in it because you do the same thing. And it's literally his MO to take people who are very popular and expose them for scams. That's what his whole channel is. So I just felt like this is a week that like you're already starting off weak and we can deal with weak points if you finish strong and y'all about to see how he finishes in the worst way. Used to be impartial. Your addiction to clicks has clouded your judgment and you've made very real errors with very real repercussions. So pay attention to the rest of this video. He said that Coffeezilla has made very real errors with very real repercussions. Let's see if Logan will ever actually show the error. Coffee, you took a shot at my reputation. Uh, so in this video today, I'm going to be defending myself with facts. Something. So another thing that's interesting is Logan Paul. He um, before this, he tweeted uh, this picture kind of dressed up like coffeezilla so he tweeted this right um this is kind of the outfit that coffeezilla wears in all his videos uh and yeah he does he uh, he loves coffee he loves coffee so hence the name so i feel like you know the way he's making this video the way he's enunciating um the way it's scripted it very much sounds like he's trying to imitate a Coffeezilla video. Um, you know, I get like, that's cute. But I couldn't stop thinking about that the whole time. Look, you may, if you're a Logan Paul fan, because here's something that I've learned. <laughs> here's something I've learned making commentary online. Okay. Somebody who you think surely they don't have like, like, surely, even if you're a fan of this person, you wouldn't have an issue with what I'm saying right now. OK, I learned this about because of the Trisha Paytas, because these people who unfollowed me because I said Trisha Paytas was being offensive. People's feelings really get hurt. No, no. If somebody likes somebody, their feelings truly get hurt. If you say you don't like them or you talk about something that kind of irks you. OK, so I acknowledge this and I just want to say if you're a Logan Paul fan, I get why you would like it. I like it, too. I like it. But in the context of you're trying to come for Coffeezilla and you did not successfully come for him, it makes me feel cringy. It does. It makes me feel cringy that you're imitating his diction and his voice, even in his in the script. And you didn't even properly come for him you did not put him in his place nowhere you didn't you truly didn't and that's what's making it feel like 
kind of awkward to me. I just had to point that out because I haven't heard anybody talk about that. And I'm like, mm -hmm. Thing that you have gotten in the habit of twisting as you continue to morph from an investigator to a gossip channel. You see, coffee's- That's another diss there. He's trying to do another diss. Also, another thing that I didn't know. There's people who get annoyed that I switch my accent. I grew up with like three different accents. So if I switch, I switch. I'm just impassioned. If you can't identify where exactly is that accent from, don't worry about it. I literally grew up around three different accents. It's whatever. I don't want my video to just be full of disclaimers. You know what? We're gonna, you know what? You know what? You know what? We're just gonna forget about the haters. Let me remove the haters from my mind. You know, time out again. Today has been an interesting day. And I think that's why my head is just going to like thinking about stupid things like somebody might, somebody's gonna be annoyed that I keep switching my accent. So we're gonna stop doing that. Okay, time back in. So I also didn't eat. Time out. I didn't eat. When I'm stressed, I don't eat. I'm definitely going to eat after this. Okay, time back in. So, Logan, you're trying to diss again. You need to start coming with facts and less dissing. Stats. Zilla tried to work with law enforcement in the past, but his work was described as not anchored to truth and often speculative. He so, I get the structure. He first wants to attack CoffeeZilla's credibility now. And then hopefully he'll come with facts. This is a tactic that, you know, we've seen many a time. Um, the problem is we don't care. Okay. This, 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 when, <laughs> when somebody exposed you using receipts using interviews of other people's experiences doing more work than you have put into this project in a year and a half we are not impressed with the ad hominems we're not we're not because we don't care coffeezilla could be the kind of guy who takes a leak on the floor of his basement and makes his dog lick it up. Okay, maybe not the dog part. My point is, there's nothing that you can say about CoffeeZilla right now because you are on trial. CoffeeZilla was not attacking your character out of the, out of the blue. He was describing a conspiracy that you were involved in and provided receipts to show that you were conspiring to scam. That's all we care about at this point. We do not care because you don't even tell us in what capacity was he trying to work with, with law enforcement. We don't care. We, we literally don't care. I'm saying this as if Logan Paul will ever watch this. I don't think he will, but... You know, maybe if you envision yourself the next Logan Paul and you're watching this right now, maybe this will help you for the next time you are in this position. He is a lopsided journalist with an agenda and he's nothing more than the keem star of crypto and finance. But another diss. As opposed to if you don't know who keem star is. God bless you. To just telling you, I'm going to show you some of the core discrepancies that I caught in CoffeeZilla's investigation. Coffee, you interviewed the developer who stole the game code, fled to Switzerland, and held it hostage for a million dollars. Well, his name is Zach Kelling. Surely, as the internet detective that you proclaim to be, you would know that he spent time in prison for multiple felonies, one for aggravated robbery, armed robbery at a- Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. He's doing it again, but for this guy that he hired. So, the developer- if I remember correctly, CoffeeZilla does address that this developer is a shady person. I think that was part of the criticism. The criticism. How, how did I say it like that? La, la, la. Part of his critique of you, Logan, is that you hired very shady people. CoffeeZilla is fully aware that this Zachary dude is shady. But 
you wouldn't give him no information. Your manager wouldn't give him no information. So he's going to talk directly to the source. He's going to talk to the guy who you hired to develop it. Yes, he has a criminal record. He's a shady guy, but you hired him. He actually works on the project. So why would we not, why would Coffee not interview him to get some insight about what was going on? And of course, he's holding it with a grain of salt. This three-part series was about taking what the interviewee said and seeing if it matches up with what other people are saying or with other evidence. So CoffeeZilla does address this. So there's no point. I mean, he's a criminal, but you hired him. Like, you highlighting this aspect of Zachary makes you look bad, not CoffeeZilla. A liquor store and the other four, surprise, obstructing the legal process. I can see why you kept him anonymous. Who will be calling Z here? I guess among many things, it doesn't surprise me that he lied about having 30 engineers and a $50,000 a week burn rate. On my end, I have 30 engineers, I'm burning $50,000 which side note is how this delusionist landed on the million dollar code ransom but it turns out he only had three i don't know what what is the point of this um we know zach is bad coffeezilla showed us in his three-part series that this guy is bad so what are you trying to prove exactly y y you're just making yourself look kind of foolish because you hired this guy engineers. Wouldn't someone with journalistic integrity know their credible source had not only an agenda, but a fondness for orange jumpsuits? He, he, did, he did know. Or did you just hear what you wanted to hear and moved on? It, he, he found somebody who was directly involved in the scam who would speak to him, who would be willing to speak to him on record as long as you, he didn't say his full name. And he looked into the other people involved to corroborate that guy's story. Yeah, because what else can he do? You were not willing to give a statement. Like, what the heck? Because even if you're lying to yourself, Stephen, you still have to believe it. And I know what you're thinking. What type of idiot would work with... You're lying to yourself if you think this means anything. You still haven't shown us... You haven't, you haven't shown us how you haven't scammed. You haven't shown us the error. What exactly is the error that he talked to this guy? That's not an error. That, that's part of the investigation. With an unsavory individual like Zach Kelling. I guess that's what I get for trusting the team that I relied on to vet and manage Eddie's hiring process, who has turned out to be... Okay, but the team you relied on was your manager, Jeff. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the team that you relied on is your manager and your manager was made aware of how shady these guys were. He was. He didn't want to believe it. Oh, oh, we want to talk about lying to yourself and believing it. That's your manager. Your manager was made aware of how shady these guys were. He didn't want to believe it. Y y I, maybe you should have made this video to your manager. I mean, I don't know your relationship with your manager, but you need to have a talk with him. Be a professional con man that I have since learned fooled billionaires, the Mormon church, the owner of the New York Yankees, and now me. And Dude, CoffeeZilla said all of that. No, I'm sorry. This is so bad. Logan, who is on your team? Because somebody on your team wrote this script for you. And then somebody else proofread it and was like, yeah, yeah, this is going to be good. You are basically applauding CoffeeZilla for finding this out for you. CoffeeZilla found this information for you. What the heck? No, how you're dissing the guy who in his expose informed all the millions of us who watched informed us of the very thing that you just stated. Why is that in this video, this video that's supposed to help you redeem your reputation? Why are you including 
uh, a part of the script that is basically saying that CoffeeZilla did a good job. <laughs> and surely you knew Emilio, the gentleman who supposedly let his child invest in a cryptocurrency, was allegedly responsible for two rug pulls. Okay. I don't like that you, you're you trying to make him sound like he's a bad person because he let his child invest in cryptocurrency. Logan, your crypto is a game. Oh my God, dude, this is so bad. Your cryptocurrency is a game with cartoons. And it's not the adult kind of cartoons. It's not like your dink doink where it's like, hey, this is not for kids because we're talking about dink doinks. Like this looked like Neopets. If I was a kid and I had enough to in to buy an egg, I would have bought an, an egg. Dude, dude, like, don't, oh my God, this is bad. You, that, your crypto zoo, you know, it was not just going to be adults who want to play this Neopet type of game. I mean, had your crypto zoo been successful, I am 100% certain that you would have been called out still for it. Because people will talk about how, oh, these kids are playing this crypto game and they're losing money. It's targeted towards kids. I am 100% sure people would have exposed you for that. I don't know. Is that better? Is it better? Is it better to have built the game and then inevitably all these kids will lose their money and then you get exposed? No, I think we would be doing the same thing. You, 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 would, you would make the same irrelevant video. Okay. This guy, you're saying he was part of a pump and dump, okay? Before you interviewed him. So either you missed that or you knew it and failed to let the public know. Why? Because it was a clear sign that he was also untrustworthy. Okay, wait, but this is just a guy. This is not a guy who helped you, right? This is just a person who bought it. Supposedly let his Yankees and now me. And surely you knew Emilio, the gentleman who supposedly let his child invest him so either wait so emilio is somebody who bought a crypto coin bought your coin he didn't help you develop it right this is not somebody that you hired this is a customer right this reminds me of like you know when something happens something bad happens it goes viral and it's time to take it to court and the victim is not a perfect victim. Like the victim has a, a rap sheet. The victim like has done something bad before, you know, like the victim has done some questionable things before. So that makes people not want to support the victim. That's what this feels like. Like this feels like there needs to be perfect victims. I'm not saying that it's to fine that Emilio was involved in the pump and dump. I'm just saying, well, first of all, as if you care. Now, first of all, as if you care, Logan Paul, you have been involved in at least one pump and dump. No, no, you've been involved in more than one pump and dump. You you had, Ding Doink was a pump and dump, and then you've been involved in other pump and dumps afterwards. I don't know what it is about this crypto space that you guys are allowed to just get away with scamming over and over and over again. You get away with it. I don't know what it is. I don't know if the crypto community, they don't care. Like, y'all do not care that you're just getting scammed. I saw, I was watching this one um, live stream with these people. They're really into crypto. And they were saying how oh, crypto doesn't need regulation. It regulates itself. And then somebody brought up FTX, the biggest crypto scam in human history. So bigger than Bernie Madoff type of scam. Somebody brings it up and they said, well, the market corrects itself. No one's investing in the FTX coin anymore. And it's like, wait a minute. Are you saying people need to be scammed? Are you saying that the self-correction is people literally being scammed? So I don't know. Maybe the crypto world likes to be scammed. I don't get it. But us regular people we're just sitting back watching and calling you out because you need to not scam people you you need to at least not conspire to scam the thing that you're saying he's not trustworthy that's making him not trustworthy you have that same badge of guilt you have that same exact badge and then some so don't get onto your customer for doing the exact same thing that you have done He's still he's he's still allowed to say you scammed him. 
a scam another scammer is still allowed to say that another scammer scammed them the scammer got scammed just like you huh logan because we about to hear how logan is gonna basically admit that he was scammed before he could properly finish his scam you missed that or you knew it and failed to let the public know why because it was a clear sign that he was also untrustworthy you seem pretty excited but also i don't know if uh, like to be fair right let's be fair why didn't coffeezilla let us know that um it's not really relevant i don't think it's really relevant but uh, uh, but as a journalist, you could you could argue, you know, to yourself as you're making your script that somebody might pull this out on this guy and it's better for me to say it first than for somebody to say it later. It looks better. So I don't know if he knew or if 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 Coffeezilla knew or he didn't know. I don't know. Um, not that big of a deal because you still scammed. This is about you not Emilio and not the other scammers that you hired. This is about you and what you have been proven to do. Let's continue. When the guy told you that he couldn't hatch the eggs. Wait, you can't even hatch? No, I'm telling you, it's just a picture. You're kidding, you can't hatch? You're kidding, you can't hatch? You can't hatch? Uh, yeah, one <laughs> second of research would. I just think that's funny because I don't think, I, I know that's supposed to be like funny, I'm sure what like when he watched that he just thought it was so funny, but I don't like it's not that funny. I'm I'm it's funny that he thinks that's funny, but anyway. Prove that to be false as you can definitely hatch eggs and even breed your animals. Click. Okay. It says right here hatching and breeding on BSC previously functional but currently disabled on ETH. Okay. Basically this disclaimer is saying this is so stupid oh you can't even see it i'm sorry y'all so logan paul's like you can definitely hatch if you just did one second of research you could definitely hatch but then on your own video you have this disclaimer that you actually cannot hatch you cannot hatch somebody's gonna bruh this is why i want this is why I like being a small channel because somebody definitely could just make a compilation of all of us, including me, going, you cannot hatch. <laughs> Dude, you are telling us right here that you can't hatch. Coffeezilla in his video was saying you currently cannot hatch. And you are telling us the same exact thing that you're gonna hatch. What, because there was a day that you could hatch? Coffeezilla should have said you can hatch. That's no. I'm sorry. What? Click on that. Oh, we got a duck. And as you pointed out in your fine print, cross hatch. What? Hatching was available on ETH at one point, but you perpetuated the opposite as truth with your chest out. Basically, what do you? Okay, let's hear this. Nothing worked. And by the way, God. But nothing worked. Today, nothing. What you? You have as a disclaimer on your own video that it doesn't work currently. Bruh, wait, wait. Are, are we tripping? No, somebody has to, in, in the comments, please, please. Like the best case scenario right now is I am tripping. Did you, you have a disclaimer that you can't hatch. And now you are saying with your full chest in the video perpetuating that you can hatch. What? And you're getting onto Coffeezilla for saying that it doesn't work, but it doesn't work. No, 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 wait, I'm malfunctioning right now. I, almost all NFTs are just pictures. No, it's just a picture. And surely a- Okay, and now he's saying uh, uh, almost all NFTs are just pictures. Bro, what? No, 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 no. <laughs> How dare you? Because when NFTs were coming out, me and everybody else was like, it's just a picture. Why will we spend tens of thousands of dollars on a internet picture you can copy and paste? And all of y'all 
Look, I don't have the receipts. Somebody can find it on his Twitter. But all of y'all were like, NFTs are not just pictures. There's, they're attached to blah, 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 blockchain, blah, 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 blah. There's not just a picture. And, and now, but now today they're just pictures. Really? So your egg, your egg.jpg is just a picture. That doesn't make sense. Why are you, now you're degrading your own work. Just a picture? Uh, a real internet detective would not break criminal and civil laws in trying to get information, right? So why have you allowed right? the illegal recording of Jeff's phone call without his permission? And then- You know, it's funny. So, like I said, time out. Today has been an interesting day for me. But uh, I'm in the state of Texas and a phone call was had and I did record it. And what? And the, and the person on the other line is also in the state of Texas. So, and what? To be used in the court of law when and if necessary. But yeah, he's, he's going to talk about um, recording laws. I actually don't know how it goes. Coffeezilla's in Texas. We are a one-party state, meaning we don't have to ask your permission. If you call us, you, you just need to know that you could be recorded at any minute because it don't matter. I have a feeling, you know when you get those telemarketer calls and they're like, this conversation is being recorded. I don't know if they have to do that legally like they have, right? Because even if you're in, this, in a one-party state, no, no, no. Yes, yes, because I worked in phone sales. Yes. So even if you are in a one-party state, no. Okay, okay. It, dep it depends on the state. It depends on the state. So when I was working in in sales, every phone call I made was recorded. And I am in a one-party state, so that's fine. But the person on the other end was not always in a one-party state. Sometimes they were in a two-party state. I was still allowed to record them except for California and maybe Washington. There's a second state where I was not allowed to record. It and any any recording device disabled so there are state it depends on the state that your manager jeff that this phone call took place depending on the state determines if it's illegal or not even if jeff was in a two-party state that state may not have been may not be strict they may allow it because coffeezilla is in a one-party state so it depends I mean, I guess you would know. I guess you would know what state your your manager's in. But I mean, it would help to state that in this video. He's not going to say it. But it would help to state the states so that we can scrutinize because Logan, you knew we were going to watch this and heavily scrutinize you. That's why I can't believe how foolish this video is. You knew we would tear it to shreds. Your little apology when you after you went to the Japanese forest, you did a good you actually look, I know people were still dragging you, but I felt like you did a good job in that apology. This one not so much. This is not an apology, by the way. I'm not one of those people who refers to <laughs> I do not refer to a response as an apology. More like an internet criminal, post it online. It was interesting. It was like this is wild. Now, although you didn't verify any backgrounds, substantiate any evidence, took multiple criminal. What well, he substantiated a lot of evidence. He contact he called a heck of a lot of people to corroborate stories, and he looked up things in public record to validate his information, and he even called your manager to make sure that your manager was aware of the shadiness. Like, I feel like Coffeezilla did quite a lot of due diligence. And you're trying to, and you're taking that away from him. You're taking that away from him. Criminal's dude. words as truth and broke laws, you still publish the defamation. However, unlike you, the blockchain doesn't lie. So let's highlight some things that you did point out. Crypto King Jake stole $6 million. True or not, we had already removed him from the team when we realized he was a bad actor and his motives were purely financial. Con man. So, 
the program. Tell us why the program doesn't work and why it's taking you a year and a half to address it. Because, okay, that first half of the video was supposed to be pointing out to us the errors and with grave repercussions. I guess the repercussion is that he thinks CoffeeZilla is going to go to jail for three years. In your crypto dreams, in your scammy NFT crypto dreams. Oh my God, Logan. Mm. Eddie, lead developer, stole 1.7 million. True or not, when we learned he was a bad actor as well, he was immediately removed from the team. Well, again, so what? Well, myself and Jeff sold nothing and made nothing as verified through investigation and the blockchain. And it doesn't remove the fact that all of you conspired to scam. What this is sounding like is you are upset that the scammer scammed you first. This, it doesn't just go away and it's not just okay because you were out scammed. The fact that you were planning to pull it off. That's the problem, Logan. That's we just want to hear and I'm sorry for doing this again. Logan. If you really care about your reputation, you will at least apologize for conspiring. Jeff, Logan's manager, to my knowledge, never sold. Neither did Logan Paul. I repeat, Jeff and I made no money and will never make any money. That doesn't matter. You still were planning it. The sole purpose of your launch was for you to scam and profit? Money on Crypto Zoo. In fact, we only lost money trying to pick up the pieces. As has been the case with dozens of crypto and NFT projects, the space is. But why haven't you shown how you were picking up the pieces? You haven't communicated with your customers. You haven't communicated in your Discord until after this expose. You hadn't done anything. If you were spending money to pick up the pieces, wouldn't it behoove you? to make that publicly known what you're doing why would you keep that hidden i understood because if you watch C coffeezilla's video logan is very vague when he's discussing the project and it makes sense because he was planning to scam now that the scam is over and you need to deal with the repercussions why would you be vague and secretive about cleaning up the pieces is unfortunately ripe for bad actors to infiltrate projects such as yourself in the best intentions jake the snake is no longer affiliated with crypto zoo and we hope the money he reappropriated was worth ruining his reputation con man eddie is being investigated by a higher authority that i cannot speak on as you can imagine i was not cleared from legal to discuss much of this including the legal process being undertaken and the criminal investigations going on during the fallout but i do appreciate you calling out that rats under my nose stole the game code millions of dollars and left Jeff and I abandoned with no team and knives in our back. But even after 12 months of work, you've still managed to overlook one crucial piece of information. See, even though I've said it's coming so many times, you- I hate that. Even though I said it's coming so many times. You've assumed that CryptoZoo isn't being made. I freaking hate that. I said it's coming so many times. Yeah, a year and a half ago. Like, dude, you say nothing about it for a year and a half? It's safe to assume it's not coming. It, 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 everybody has accepted the L, okay? <laughs> you expected us to hold our breath for how many years should we have held our breath? How, how many years should he have waited? Should he have waited the full two years? Oh, uh, was 1.5 years too, too soon, too early? 
Should he have waited three or maybe five? You've got to be out of your mother effing mind, Logan. <laughs> because he said it so many times a year and a half ago. Look, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he said it's coming in some obscure interview a few months ago. But the point is, there are no updates. There are no actual updates. There was no message to the customers. There was no message to anybody who bought. Everybody assumed they took the L. So it's just wild to me that he would, even though I said it's coming so many times, as if he's offended when it's common sense. Who are you to decide when the development timeline ends? Um, it wasn't him. It was literally anybody that you spoke to about Crypto Zoo said that it's over. Because it was over, Logan. Be for real. You <laughs> were not planning to do a damn thing with this. You cannot say it's just coincidence that CoffeeZilla releases expose right when you were getting back into the swing of things with crypto zoo we don't believe it i got everything stolen from me in our community stopped promoting publicly as soon as i knew the extent of the internal issues took all that's a problem why did you stop you don't need to promote it but why did you stop publicly speaking on it that is why that is why we all assumed it's over all of the heat on social and you still published a defamatory hit piece and with all of that heat no response you get all of this heat not even a hang tight guys update in three months nothing you see why we don't believe you fully knowing i was innocent just so you could enrich yourself and your you're not innocent conspiring to commit a fraud is bad that's bad too. You're not innocent. Ten million dollars studio. Sharp, but deeply unethical, dangerously misleading, and illegal. I suggest you use the money you got from pump not illegal. Pumping your Patreon to hire a good lawyer. Why can't he have a Patreon? Like, are you the only influencer allowed to make money? Are people who make exposés not allowed to find a way to make money? Because here's the thing about Coffeezilla. Um, he's in the finance space and there's a lot of scams being promoted in the finance space and sponsorship deals that pay well often are associated with scams. FTX was one. I believe Masterworks to be one and established titles was one. So if he can't trust sponsorships like what other choice does he have? Uh, so many people of his work, so many people are willing to give five to ten dollars to get more. That is totally fine. You're gonna need it. And maybe we could have talked about this if you had reached out to me personally, not my manager Jeff. But the thing is, he did reach out to you personally. Hold on. I think Coffeezilla has the the stuff. The Text. So he, yeah. So he reached out to Logan on Instagram. And Logan responded on Twitter here. He said, You know, I didn't see that. How do you expect me to see that? I get so many DMs. It's fine. But then Coffee texted Jeff and let him know he's telling your manager to please let Logan know I'm trying to reach out to him. I think that is professional. Like, you reach out in DM, no response. So reach out to the manager. What, you want him to, like, did he also need to email you, then find your phone number, then do message you on Twitter? And that's, like, that's like a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. Like, he's not trying to come off as, like, a weirdo. <laughs> okay, he... he he sent you a, a DM. You didn't see it. He reached out to your manager. Because a lot of people in your position, Logan, have managers for precisely this reason. So the manager can filter out nonsense, you know, filter out nonsense and, and bring in the not nonsense. 
And he says, let Logan know. I'd like to speak to him. It's hard to reach him, as you know. I think this was very professional. And then he reached out to Jeff two more times or one or two more times. And then he reached out to you on your email. Like, I, I don't see anything wrong with it. He was trying different avenues, and I think he tried to do it in the most respectful way possible. And you're getting on to him for that. Like, okay, it's your fault that you don't look at your DMs. You're mad that he didn't message you. What Did you want him to make it public? Did, did you want him to turn every and any uh, confrontation into content the way that you do? Did you want him to at you publicly to get your attention? So now there's more clicks and views and all of that. Not everybody thinks every single thing in life needs to be made into content and sensationalism. Who is not me, me, Stephen, but the first time you did was on Christmas Eve. Wrong. It was on 2021, whatever it says in the tweet. After you released your series so you could rely on false statements. Wrong. Statements and unreliable people used recklessly. The subject line was third request for comment. Yeah, not quite. This will be my third time reaching out to you and your team. The first two times were through your manager, Jeff. The first two times were through your manager, Jeff. Okay, so the last time on Christmas Eve, after the fact, Actually, was the to first me, time. you have a funny way of twisting things. And I also hey, Logan, you, you have a funny way of twisting twi things. You have a funny way of twisting things, Logan. When was this? October. Maybe talk to you first, Logan. Mm, that's embarrassing. I'm sorry, that... You need to take the L. Like, this whole video is an L, but that that's a major proved, provable L. That's an L. What the hell? <laughs> Twitter, why hide that? Trust me, CryptoZoo is coming. I will make damn sure of it. Well, now you will because you're embarrassed. And honestly, it sucks that after years of personal reform, going through trials and tribulations and busting my ass to evolve into a person that I can say I'm actually proud of, you led the charge to drive and monetize a narrative telling millions of people that I'm a fraud. But you are. And let me just say, again, I am proud of Logan Paul. Well, not this. Child. If I get me a hater today, they're going to take that clip out of context. I am proud of the reformation and work Logan has done. But he still has some growing to do. As we all. I am not in that position of having millions of fans and all that responsibility. So all I can judge is the fact that you did something fraudulent that hurts your fans. And I... We're going to judge you on that. You know, I'm sure in other areas of your life, you have grown. I've seen it. I think you have grown as a man, Logan. I do. But when it comes to this crypto stuff, you have some evolution to continue doing here, at least for the sake of your fans. Because this narrative that you're saying CoffeeZilla created only has you to blame. You sent those text messages conspiring to pump and dump. And unfortunately, you hired scammers who out scammed you. But it doesn't remove the fact that you were planning to scam all along. And at the end of the day, you ended up scamming your consumers because there was no product delivered. There was a prong that there was a day that you could hatch the eggs. Okay. Well, if it's not currently functional, then the eggs are literally worthless. Even the hatch ones. So you did. You you are a fraud. You could say it's an accident. You could say you didn't know. You could say you didn't realize that. You know, because I could look. Look, look I can kind of see it this way. He wanted to do a pump and dump pre-launch. And I think what it would have done is it would have made him a lot of money without completely annihilating the fans. I think that's what he meant to do. That's what he wanted to do. 
He wanted to make some extra couple millions, but still, like, still have it be worth something so that people don't just completely lose their money. They're just not going to make much money. I think that's what he wanted to do. Um, and he's mad that he was out scammed first. And it's like, well, that's still, still pumping, dumping is bad. Okay. It's just like, just don't do it. And two, you are responsible for it. Like your developer was a scammer and stole your code. You're still responsible for delivering the code. You're still responsible Or I tried to scam my audience. That is patently false. This no. video is made. You haven't shown us how. You have not shown us a single shred of evidence to disprove that. You haven't shown us any reason to believe you weren't trying to scam. Mainly for my fans and anyone who's on the fence that I hope I can help understand a situation that is tremendously complex but has been oversimplified for both views and clicks. And lastly, call well, isn't that, wasn't that the purpose of this video? Shouldn't you explain the complexities of the situation in this video to redeem yourself so that we can understand? Wasn't, isn't that why this video exists? But instead of doing that in this video, you resort to ad hominem attacks on everybody involved while also weirdly praising CoffeeZilla for his ability to do research without you even realizing it. And nowhere have you shown us that you were in good faith releasing a project and will make good on your consumers. Coffeezilla, I now know your motives with this. Clout and money, good for you, but also you're, you're slimy as So I'm not going to come on. Logan, you are slimy, and I don't like that. I was really rooting for you. I was. We were all rooting for you. But um, Coffeezilla is not the slimy one. Just, I don't know. You're never going to see this. Just take a moment and think about it. Like, actually think, Logan. Put your ego aside and think. On any of your podcasts, if you want to come on Impulsive and talk about this, that's fine. You have denied. You don't need to. Why do you need to talk to him? Okay, this is what I don't understand. The time for talk is over. He gave you multiple chances to talk. And you didn't. Now the truth is out. There's nothing else to talk. There's nothing more to talk to CoffeeZilla about. What, is, what are you going to talk to him about? Now we've seen the truth. We've seen the truth. We've seen your text messages. We've seen how you, you vetted your people. We have seen it. <laughs> and in this response video that you have 100% control of, you failed to address the most damning pieces of evidence against you. So literally, there is no reason to talk to what is CoffeeZilla going to do? What do you want to do? What you want to make fun? You want to make fun of his suspenders? Uh, like, what, what, what are you going to do? There's literally nothing. There's nothing to talk about. There's no reason to talk anymore. The only thing you need to do is prove you're not a scammer. That's it. The, talk, the time for talk is over, Logan. And what's, what's more, what's, what's more is... CoffeeZilla offered to go on live with everybody involved so that you, so all of you are on a platform to speak your piece and defend yourself. And all the little super chats will go towards paying back the people you defrauded and you refused. But you want CoffeeZilla to go on your podcast to make you specifically more money? So you can play little jokes and pranks with your little friends on CoffeeZilla, the guy who embarrassed you. But he embarrassed you using the stuff you actually said in full context. You're embarrassed. Your ego is in the way. You're actually too emotional right now. You shouldn't have made this video. You actually needed to calm down because you were not rational in this video and you did not come out ahead in this video. And you have a lot of fans who love you no matter what. That's the great thing about, oh, looking at that ratio, the like to dislike ratio. Um, you have a lot of fans who will have your back, Logan. Um, I see how you're an 
inspiring type of guy. And that's why, that's why I felt, maybe that's why I really had to react because I'm disappointed. I am disappointed. I, 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 yeah, I'm disappointed. I feel like you are better than this, Logan. I think you're better than this. I don't know. I hope one day you see it. So, look at this. Denied my invitation multiple times. You're still invited. It can be a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, if not, we're going to handle this ourselves while we continue to build CryptoZoo, and I'll see you in court. Oh, also, <laughs> he ends with, I'll see you in court. So, yeah, he's definitely not going to go on your podcast now because then you're just going to serve him papers. No, he's not, he's not going on your podcast. Now the only option is to do a live stream because he was willing to have you come in person to his studio. Now the only thing to do is a live stream. Why can't you live stream? Hmm? Wait, Logan, why can't you live stream? Why can't you do that? Why can't you live stream? It's weird. Look at this BS coming 2023 slash 24. Ridiculous. Oh, yeah. What a coincidence that this expose came out right when you were announcing that it's coming in a year or two. Wow. That was horrible. I'm looking at these comments. Zero apologies. Zero addressing victims. Zero accountability. This is actually so funny because he literally admits he hired a bunch of criminals. I've never seen a person explain in depth how they hired a bunch of criminals as a way to go at someone who reported it before. Right. Like, you're showing us more how criminal they are. Like, what does that, what does that have to do with CoffeeZilla? Because he was trying to say, these guys are so criminal, you shouldn't have interviewed them. But you hired them. They were involved in the project. Thusly, they are worth interviewing. Period. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they eat dookie for breakfast and post live streams about it. Like, it literally doesn't matter. You hired, they're the people who are involved in the project. Therefore, it's free license to interview them to get their insights. It could be freaking Casey Anthony, like pathological liar lying all the time, but they worked on the project, even amongst all the lies. There's still little kernels of truth you could pick out in there and interview somebody else and see if it matches up. You just showed us how foolish you are. Yeah, suing people is never going to get people on the fence to your side, especially not on YouTube especially not on YouTube. Threatening lawsuits on YouTube is a guaranteed way to get people to uh, not want to fight for you. I like the part where Logan denied Coffee's accusations by confirming Coffee's accusations. <laughs> I'm actually stunned that we are in a society where incompetence like this is rewarded. This man has made a career of disrespecting, scamming, and incompetence. Can you imagine threatening someone after scamming a bunch of investors? It doesn't matter how many people you hired who were sketchy. You are still responsible. You can tell after all those apologies over the years, he didn't really mean it and just told us to forget. Yeah, this is not good. It is, it is kind of backfiring. on. It would have been better. I always say this. I always say this time and time again. It would have been better for you to just stay silent. All those years of growth that you're claiming that you did to repair your reputation, you kind of posting this video made that little backtrack worse. I don't know why these people don't just stay silent. Lord. 
So on Twitter, let's see if anything new is happening on Twitter. Wait, the the coffee. Okay. Let's see. can't get over the fact that Logan's okay so Logan subscribed to CoffeeZilla's Patreon oh and there's clips I think Logan put some clips too fucking annoying that has bothered me <gasps> I cannot have cursing uh, on he's YouTube the he's the most formidable opponent I've had I'm not kidding the guy's, the guy's good why did you block him on Twitter I don't like this he's referring to CoffeeZilla as the most formidable opponent he's ever had he, the guy is good Logan, this is not a game. This is not a game of chess and checkers. This is not a game. This is real. <laughs> you defrauded people. See, and that's why I don't take the video seriously. I mean, aside from the fact that it wasn't good. But this is what I mean when I say Logan uses personal issues. He uses them as content. He's like, this guy's good. This is my most formidable opponent. He is formidable, Logan, because you did the ish. This is not a rap battle. It's not a boxing battle. It's not a, well, I make more money than you, bro. This is you scammed investors. And you find CoffeeZilla to be a formidable opponent because you did it. <laughs> Is that simple? CoffeeZilla is not some mastermind genius. He's just thorough. Like, he researched into your stuff and found the dirt. It's not formidable, it's just the truth. He said, the guy's good. Yeah, I think he's good at researching to get to the bottom of what he's trying to get to. He is. But the fact is, when you're dealing with somebody who's just researching what you actually did, not they're not looking for it. Look, he, he, it's not like he's looking up your old tweets to find how to cancel you or like whatever. He's not looking up. He's looking up specifically. You did. Th there's a problem here that involves People who are vastly, vastly poorer than you. They're your victims. And the goal is to find out if this was intentional. And it was. You intentionally tried to scam them. Unintentionally, you lost the code to the program. But you intentionally didn't fix it. You intentionally didn't hire somebody new. I'm not even going to fault you for not looking into your people better. I'm not even going to fault you. I'm not even going to go into, well, you shouldn't have hired criminals. I'm not even going to go there. Hire somebody new. If you can't, let the people know that there's delay. That simple. Oh, my goodness. Um, uh, put 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 people who have lost here on on a pillar and 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 highlight them. That's what I would do if I were him. I'd milk the shit out of this. And like I said, he's probably going to. He's good. He's very good. Uh, Why is putting? He said, Kavrizel is gonna put people who lost, put them on a pillar, and he calls that milking. Highlighting the victims of your scam. You're calling it milking, Logan. This is a similar mindset that you had in the Japanese forest. You weren't looking at life like real life. You were looking at life like it's a game and you're doing it again now in the crypto space. You are saying highlighting victims of a fraud is milking? You're lost. You are lost. Unfortunately, at this point in your in your career, you might be too successful to care anymore because back then when you were in the Japanese forest, you weren't at this level. Now you were at a lower level. You were still trying to make it. But maybe now you're at a level that y you don't care anymore.
There's no incentive for you to learn, relearn from this mistake. That's unfortunate. I hope you get over that. I hope somebody talks to you about that. Um, but it, it, part six is the more he says and the more he continues to spread this misinformation that this was any sort of con or scam, the more I have for the lawsuit that I am filing. He's, he's File it, baby. No one's stopping you. Probably going to. Um, uh, no, like, we literally do not care. No, we do not care. File it. It's not going to go anywhere. If Logan Paul sues him, countersuing him based on this highly defamatory image. Yeah, this is unfortunate, Logan. You know? Um, I don't know what it'll take for Logan to come to his senses, or if he ever will, but... Yeah, we were rooting for you. You kind of messed it up. <sighs> Look, I... My position on influencers, so many of them mess up. So many of them mess up. Um, the other day, I made a video uh, about Tamimi. She's a YouTuber. I, I love Tamimi. I don't watch her as much anymore because she's she's doing expose videos about, about things that I feel like we can't control. You know, like apps. Like, oh, this app has all these predators on it and there's all these kids on it and the app is not doing anything about it. And I just kind of feel like they don't ever do anything about it. You know what I mean? I just feel so hopeless. So I, I'm i not as engaged as I used to be because I'm like, I'm feeling like you're showing me all this bad stuff and there's nothing I can do about it. But um, yeah, somebody in my comment section was like, ew, I hate Tamimi. She's, she's as bad as the people she's talking about and i'm like huh what happened did i miss something well, shoot i don't know <laughs> i still don't know what happened but um yeah i noticed and then like i mentioned uh the two people somebody let me know that these two people who uh stopped watching my videos because i was <laughs> because i said uh, i'm not a Trisha Paytas fan. Oh, yes. I remember the video. I said I'm no longer a Trisha Paytas fan. I used to be a fan. And then she was doing that thing where she is trying to be offensive on purpose. And that made me no longer a fan. And. Okay. <laughs> they didn't like that. So. I noticed that. Um, when it comes to the Internet, it's so like how people perceive you is so fickle. It's very fickle. And I could see how like a new influencer could be confused, right? Like you're confused. Like obviously there's nothing wrong with, with not being a fan of somebody, okay? If the person wants to unsubscribe, they unsubscribe. Like there's nothing wrong with that. If you're a new influencer and you see that, Maybe you're nervous. Maybe you don't know what to think. Maybe you feel like everything is a cancellation. But Logan Paul is not a new influencer. He's been in this game for a little bit. He's experienced a lot. And I feel like he should be able to differentiate between um, somebody being an annoying gnat, as he said on his show Impulsive, he's calling Coffeezilla a gnat. He should be able to differentiate between somebody who's just being annoying and somebody who is calling you out because you should know better and do better because this is not your first, this is not your first scam. This is not your first scam. And it's like, why are you refusing? Why are you refusing to improve in this area? What is it? Is the money that, I mean, the money is good. Shoot. Let me, let me. Yeah. The money actually is really good. So it's like, what happened, dude? You're able to change in so many other areas. You're able to be open-minded in so many other areas. You know, you, there are things that you have done and changed about yourself that people can truly say they're proud of you about. But in this area, I guess because it makes you substantial amount of money, substantial, like you stood to make 
tens of millions of dollars. Um, I guess it's the money. Hey, must be the money. I guess it is because you refuse to improve. And ah, Logan, I don't like this. I don't like it. Like I don't like nitpicking at people and and you know I'm not one of those pe- I'm not I don't thrill I don't lavish and like picking an influencer and being like oh my gosh you did this you did that that's why I stopped making videos about Trisha Paytas because <laughs> there was a time on this channel that I was like maybe I should get more views I was being associated with other YouTubers uh, more than what I was used to. And I felt like, yeah, maybe I should try to get more views. So I was talking about, I was doing like reactions to, oh, Trisha Paytas is eating this cake and Trisha Paytas this. And, and, uh, in one of those videos, I was like, y'all, this is going to be my last reaction because I do not care. I don't care about how, m- how many thousands of dollars her couch costs and how like she could have donated that to Yousef. And I don't care. <laughs> I'm not one of these people I used to um, there was this channel that I was subscribed to it like it like was digging deep it was like digging in on these influencers every little thing and I was like I, I do not care I don't care that like in 2019 they said they hate the color pink and now they wear pink every day I don't and it would be like, see, they're a hypocrite. I don't care, okay? But what I do care about is this kind of stuff, stuff that affects people. I care about friggin', oh, the, Nixium. Nixium just completely rocked my world. Nixium, after I learned about Nixium, that's when I officially was like, I can't do it. I can't. I can't do this. Um, one of my little YouTube buddies. Can I call her a friend or YouTube buddy? Her name is Pearl Swirl. Okay, Pearl Swirl. She is growing. Uh, I don't think she's gonna watch this video all the way to the hour and ten minute mark. But if you are, I am rooting for you, Pearl. I am. Um. This girl really, you know, she really, she motivates me because I know the stuff that she's dealing with mental health wise, I deal with similar things. Um, and she's still doing it and she's getting views. She's getting subscribers. And I was like, man, you know, maybe I should do that too. I just, I I'm sorry. I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. I don't care because I, I learned about Nixium. And how disgusting this is. And then I just get sucked into just more. I'm just more interested in stuff that seems to affect the everyday person. So all of that to say, geez, I ramble. Welcome to my channel. I hope you liked it. And I hope you give it a thumbs up. All of that to say, Logan, I don't like doing this to you but um dude it's not right okay it's not right like i have to call you out i have to call you out because this this is big this is this is not the first time you're scamming you're refusing to change you're refusing to grow and you're being all butthurt that somebody's exposing you for this rather than the way you viewed other scandals in the past, viewing it as an opportunity to grow and realize your mistake and dive deeper into, you know, what compels you to do this? What compels you to view things like it's a gamification of life? Who knows? Maybe one day you will, but um, obviously it's not today. Thanks for watching and hanging out with me. I um, I need to attend to some real life stuff myself and actually eat food yeah that was my stomach growling until next time 
see you later. Much love, much luck. Bye.